Got some gospel in the house of God this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, good morning. My name is Taylor. I'm one of the pastors here at First United Methodist Church. It is good to be with you today. I want to welcome those who are also worshiping with us via live stream or YouTube. If you are watching via live stream up in your right-hand corner, right around that area there, there's a button for you to hit. That is the Connect card. You can fill that out. It lets us know that you are watching. Also gives you an opportunity to sign up for things, give, and send in prayer requests, just like anybody who's here with us this day. So I encourage you to do that. Here at First, we exist to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. In doing so, we hope to be a sanctuary of Christian hope, love, and encouragement in the heart of Sioux Falls. That is our mission and our vision, something we take very seriously, but we do it lightheartedly. And uh, we want to provide as many opportunities for you to engage in that mission and vision as possible. And a few of those are coming up, so I invite you to turn to the video screens as uh, we see what's coming up here in the life of the church. Lent is quickly approaching, which means we're also getting closer to Shrove Tuesday. On February 28th, we'll be celebrating Fat Tuesday with Flapjack Follies. Meet us in the multi-purpose room from 4.30 to 6.30 for all you can eat pancakes, great music, and a great event for the whole family. Tickets are on sale now and are available from any member of the Chancel Choir or in the church office. So be sure to get yours today. Did you know the best way for us to grow as people of faith is through small group experiences? Starting the week of February 27th, groups will be meeting for, listen, praying in a noisy world, dare to dream, God unbound, and Christ walk. Each book offers a unique study to help you grow in your faith. Be sure to stop at the Information Center to get signed up and order your book. Jacob Forstein, our facilities director, will be serving up a special breakfast on Sunday, February 26th. The funds raised from this breakfast will go towards the purchase of a bobcat to help with snow removal during the winter. We've raised nearly $4,000 so far, but we need your help getting the rest of the way. John 3.11 says, if you have two shirts, give one to the poor. And if you have food, share it with those who are hungry. We have an opportunity to share a meal at the banquet in the coming weeks. On Tuesday, February 21st, we'll be serving breakfast at the downtown location. And on Tuesday, February 28th, we'll be serving dinner at the West location. To get involved in this important ministry, be sure to sign up using your Connect card. We appreciate you taking the time to fill out your Connect card, not only this morning, but every time you join us for worship. The Connect card helps you sign up for upcoming events and groups and helps us to stay connected with you and build a stronger community here at First. Now, I invite everyone to stand and say hello to the people you're worshiping with today. Welcome to the Sunday worship service at First United Methodist Church at 401 South Spring Avenue in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. We are glad you're worshiping with us today. You may also tune into our live stream broadcast at www.sfumc.org at 830 and 945. Today's sermon title is The Struggle is Real, Doubt. Pastor Taylor Johnson is giving the message today. We hope you find the worship service a blessing for your life this week. Good morning. I am Donna Cooper, and please join me in the call to worship. Lord, you laid the earth's foundations. You placed its cornerstone while the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. You set limits for the sea and said this far and no further. You gave orders to the morning and showed the dawn its place. You molded the earth until it took shape. You alone know the springs of the sea. You alone comprehend the vastness of the universe. You alone know the laws of heaven. Lord, give wisdom to our hearts and understanding to our minds 
as we offer our worship to you. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we have been following the sermon series, The Struggle is Real. We thank you for being by our side during all of our struggles. There are times when we feel we are alone, but of course, that is not true. You are loving us, guiding us, and protecting us. We stand in awe of your power. You are the Almighty. You are the God of hope. We trust in you. May our hearts be open through your word in song today. Blessed Lord, amen. Our opening hymn this morning is I Sing the Almighty Power of God, number 152, followed by God is Able.
Now we come to the time of tithing and offering. Please join me. Awesome God, this time of tithing and offering is our time to thank you, to give back to you in visible form all the love and support that you give to us each day. We thank you for being our God of hope, especially in times of doubt and fear. We thank you for being our provider. Please accept this offering as a token of our love for you. Amen. Right now, I call forth the ushers to um, help us with our offering time, and we get to listen to our praise band and organ.
Now we come to the prayers of the people, and that will be followed by the Lord's Prayer. God of hope, our world is in turmoil, with so many atrocities being committed in every corner of the world. Please be with the world's leaders and our nation's leaders. We pray for peace for all people. God of hope, please be with the family and Pastor Lori Kidd as she mourns the loss of her mother. And please be with the family of Irene Fenstermaker as her funeral was yesterday. Please be with everyone who is experiencing grief. Give them assurance that you hold their loved one in your loving arms in heaven. Please bring your healing touch to Sue, the sister of Terry. Please be with her, give her hope, give her strength. God of hope, we use this time of silence to pray to you the prayers that we have on our hearts. Now we together will pray the prayer that you taught your disciples so very long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we have our gift of music from our chancel choir.
Well, good morning again, friends. It's good to be with you as we begin in our second to last week in our series, The Struggle is Real. Can you believe we've gotten this far through it? Uh, it's, it's flown by incredibly quickly, and I just want to real quick touch on where we've been over the series. Maybe if you've missed a week or uh, this is your first time here, I just wanted to let you know what we've been talking about over the last few weeks, maybe give you some context. In week one, we talked about anxiety. Week two, we talked about work and life balance. Week three, we looked at grief and loss. Then the next week, we looked at stress and depression. And then two weeks ago, we looked at self-worth and self-care. And last week, Pastor Bob talked to us about relationships and the struggle that we deal with those. And uh, so next week, we will be looking at God's plan and how we struggle with discernment and hearing God's voice in our life. And, uh, you know, we've, uh, as we've been going along this, we, just, we know that these are really difficult topics, and it's hard to unpack them in such a short amount of time. I mean, each of these topics in themselves uh, can, can really be a sermon series on their own. Um, so I just wanted to announce the next eight sermon series is going to be anxiety, work life. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but our next uh, sermon series is uh, God on the Move. I'm really excited about this. We're going to talk about how God is on the move, not only in the life of our church, but in this community, in our, our nation, and in our world, and uh, how we can respond accordingly to God's movement, moving. So really encourage you to invite some friends and family to that uh, over the next uh, after we, we finish up this one, that will begin our Lenten series. So uh, invite some friends and family. It's going to be a, a great series to, to learn more about how God is moving. And real quick, um, I'm giving everyone permission to pull out their phones. I promised, uh, promised somebody that we would do this. Um, if you wanted to do this right now, it literally takes this short amount of time. If you have an, an iPhone, you can go to the iTunes App Store. If you have an Android, you can go to Google Play. We have an app. And you search First United Methodist, South Dakota. I'm going to do it right here to show you just how quick and easy it is. First United Methodist Church SD, actually. And then our app will pull up. And on the, uh, on the app, you will have our live stream. You will have uh, a way to give, our news and events. All of our information that's coming up is all on there. You can fill out a connect card. Anything that you need to get connected here at first is on there. So I encourage you to do that. Also, our podcast is on there. So download that. Stay connected with what's going on here at first. It's really quick and really easy. So I've done my duty. I uh, just really wanted to, to say I do truly believe that we are uh, to be a community of Christ followers. We should be able to be open and honest with each other. I'm not necessarily saying we got to look around, but I just want to know a big question right off the bat. How many people in your life have ever struggled with doubt, particularly in the realm of faith? So it's something a lot of us have struggled with. I, I, I know it's uh, a really difficult thing to struggle with as well. Uh, and that's what we're going to be diving into today is the struggle of doubt. And we're going to look at the, the story of Job. And I want us to actually start near the end of Job. Uh, so we're going to be looking at chapter 38, verses 1 through 11. Then the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind, Who is this darkening counsel with words lacking knowledge? Prepare yourself like a man. I will interrogate you, and you will respond to me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you know who set its measurements. Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring tape on it? On what were its footings sunk? Who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang in unison and all the divine beings shouted. Who enclosed the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment, the dense clouds its wrap. When I imposed my limit for it, put a bar and doors and said, You may come this far and no further. Here your proud waves stop. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are thankful for this time of worship that you would allow us to gather here in your name. We pray that as uh, the words have been spoken from your word, that we would dwell a little deeper into who you are, that we might come to know you in a new and different way. God, we pray this day that the meditations of our hearts would be pleasing to you, that uh, our, your spirit would be made known in this place. The words of my mouth would be of your spirit, and that we could come to you together as a community to lift each other up in times of struggle and doubt. We pray all this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. 
So we started at the very end of the story of Job, but I want us to go back to the beginning real quick and just give you a quick synopsis. Again, this is one of those things. Job is a story that we could unpack within a four to five week series, but we're gonna, I'm going to do my best over the next 15 minutes to tell the story and get something out of it. So it starts with us meeting Job, an upright and devout man who had it all. And when I say he had it all, he truly did. He had seven sons and three daughters, 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 oxen, and 500 donkeys, along with many, many, many servants. And uh, so Job just, he was doing all right. He had, he had it pretty well. And so God is uh, noticing that Satan, or as uh, our translation will we'll call him the adversary, is roaming the earth. And God says to him, what are you doing here? Well, I'm, I'm just, I'm mulling around. And God says, hey, you, you see my man Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is devout, and he loves me, and he would never curse my name. And Satan says, duh. Do you know how much he has? He has it all. Why would he have any reason to curse your name? And God says, all right, I will let you test Job. I will let you test my faithful servant. You take everything away from him. That's fine. Just don't hurt him. You watch. He will still praise me. And so we hear in Job chapter 1, verses 13 through 22, one day Job's sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. A messenger came to Job and said the oxen were plowing and the donkeys were grazing nearby when the Sabians took them and killed the young men with swords. I alone escaped to tell you. While this messenger was speaking, another arrived and said, a raging fire, <clears throat> excuse me, fell from the sky and burned up the sheep and devoured the young men. I alone escaped to tell you. And while this messenger was speaking, another arrived and said, Chaldeans set up three companies, raided the camels and took them, killing the young men with swords. I alone escaped to tell you. While this messenger was speaking, another arrived and said, your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house when a strong wind came from the desert and struck the four corners of the house. I bet you can guess what happened. It fell upon the young people and they died, but... I alone escaped to tell you. Job arose, tore his clothes, shaved his head, fell to the crown, and worshipped. He said, naked I come from my mother's tomb, naked I will return. The Lord has given, the Lord has taken, bless the Lord's name. In all this, Job didn't sin or blame God. The test intensifies and... Job, God and Job, are, or God and Satan are having a conversation, and God says, I told you. Did you doubt me? I told you he wouldn't curse my name. And Satan says, well, anybody would give up everything they have to preserve their life. So, of course, he didn't. And God said, all right, you can, you can strike him physically. Just spare his life. That's all I, that's all I ask. I know he's devout. Just do not kill him. And so Job gets boils on his skin, and we begin to hear a completely different tune from Job. He begins to curse the day that he was born, and we, we can kind of begin to relate to Job a little deeper. Now Job's friends and his wife are, are there to encourage him, but they're encouraging him in a very strange way. They say, just curse God. Stop being a proud fool. Curse God, and this will all be done and over with. No problem. It will all go back to normal. And Job said to his wife, you're talking like a foolish person. Will we receive good from God, but not also receive bad? But nonetheless, we hear some of the deepest laments from a man who had it all and now has nothing. And throughout the book of Job, we begin to see doubt creep into the story. Now, I have to admit that I struggled with writing a sermon, and I struggled because I think there's so much to say about doubt. There, there really truly is just a multitude to say, and especially in the life of the church. And I admire Pastor Bob for being able to preach uh, with no notes whatsoever. Every now and then he'll have a note card to remind himself of a, of a quote, but a, that's it. And, but as I tell him, if I don't have this script and this outline, friends, we are going all over the place. <laughs> So I did my best to kind of dwindle this down into what I think God is trying to tell us about doubt through the story of Job. And this morning I want to look at two different types of doubt in terms of our faith life. The first one is doubting faith, 
And the second one is doubting God. And first, I want to look at doubting faith. You see, in the church, we're given a constant instruction to trust in God. We're taught to fully surrender our lives to following Christ, right? But here's something I want us to realize and remember, that in doing those things, it will not completely eliminate doubt. And that's okay. That's right, I said it, it's okay. Doubt is, is an okay thing. Doubt does not automatically equal disbelief or denial. In fact, some of the most influential thinkers in Christian tradition struggled with doubt, the likes of C.S. Lewis and Mother Teresa, Martin Luther, John Calvin, Pope Francis, and even John Wesley, the catalyst for the Methodist movement, doubted. And we can take a lot, especially from John Wesley's doubt, because ultimately that led him to his moment of his heart being strangely warmed. You see, when we're doubting our faith, it, I believe it is a, a heart check for us. It gives us permission and allows us to step back and say, why is it that I believe what I believe? What is it that Christ is calling me to know and where is he calling me to go? You see, we as people were given unique ability, a unique gift set apart from all of creation. We were given the gift of intelligence. And with that intelligence, we can question and wonder and, yes, even doubt. And quite honestly, I think we need to allow for more questions to be asked in the church. For so long, I think that the stigma of church is that you go, you receive, and that's it. That is, that is the finality of it. There's no room to question. There's no room to wonder. There's no room to dig deeper. I think we need to completely squash that. Because God's greatest commandment for us is to love the Lord your God with all your hearts, all your souls, and all of your mind. God is not calling us to weak-minded faith, but instead calls us to go deeper. God allows us to have areas of doubt in our life because healthy doubt comes from wanting to know God more fully. And in order for that doubt to be healthy, it must be more about discovering God and less about having all knowledge and answers. But even so, when we seek God, when we, when we doubt in a healthy way, what happens when, for lack of better terms, it all hits the fan? What happens when we hit our moments in life that are like Job? We begin to feel as though we have lost it all. When our prayers begin to sound more like Job's, what's happening? God, I've been good. I've been devout and faithful. I, I just, I don't understand what's happening. I'm seriously struggling and don't feel you anywhere near. Do I deserve this? Our prayers may even get to a point where we're saying, God, are you even listening at all? This is terrible. I wish I was never born. What were you thinking when you created me? God, I thought you loved me. I'm starting to feel as though not only you don't even care, but that you don't even exist. Friends, what happens when our prayers get to that point? I get it. The struggle is very, very real. And strangely enough, the words of God in response to Job's questioning and doubt can, can bring us faith. Now, when I first read through that passage, I did not get a warm, fuzzy feeling by any means. Then the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind. That doesn't sound pleasant and calm. But God responds to Job, where were you when I created it all? Don't you know I command the moon and the sun and the stars? I even set limits for the ocean, the vast body of water across this earth. I told it exactly where to stop. And I think it's important to note that although God is coming in a whirlwind to Job, this is a reminder from God. It's not to diminish Job's real concerns and real struggles, not by any means, but instead, it's to say to Job and to us, if I can do all of that, don't you believe that I can take care of you as well? 
Don't you believe I can use that same power that created the heavens and the earth, that commands the moon and the stars and the universe to exist, I can use that same power to take care of you. You see, I think the problem with doubt comes when we begin to box God up and think that we've got it all figured out. We begin to think we understand situations better than God. We think that our limited knowledge of a finite situation can outweigh the all-knowing power of God who commands the entire universe. Friends, our life will bring struggles, and some of which can really, if I I may be brutally honest with the church this morning, they can really suck. Our struggles are real. And it causes us to doubt and to question. And when we begin to doubt God and seek our own satisfaction rather than God's, we start limiting God to a human-sized box. And so as I was thinking about this this metaphorical box, I, I wanted to physically see it for myself. What does this mean for us? And so this box, I found one that's, that's fairly big, at least around the church. I know they're a bigger box. And, you know, I begin to, to put my knowledge of God into this box. I put scripture. I put, I put tradition. I put reason. I put experience. All my John Wesley nerds in the house of God this morning just realized I hit all four points of the quadrilateral. Woo-hoo. Pastor Bob's going to be so proud of me. We begin to fill our box with everything we know about God, and it's, it's pretty big. It's pretty full. We have, we have quite a bit of knowledge of God. And then, you know, we'll, we'll add some things every now and then, but for the most part, we can close this up. We got it, we got it figured out. But then you step back, take a look at it. You know, as big as this box is, in the context of the sanctuary, this room that we're in right now, this, that's a, it's a pretty small box. And in the context of our community, our city, it even, looks even smaller. And in the context of our nation and our world, this box becomes even smaller and smaller yet. And then you think of it in the perspective of the universe. Oh. God, I don't have it all figured out. But the beauty and the hope that we can find in the struggle of doubt is remembering that God lives inside this box. God's knowledge is inside this box, but God's knowledge also dwells outside of this box. That God's knowledge of the universe, of everything, is far greater than our comprehension. It's so good, it's so vast, and we can dwell in that, knowing that the creator of the universe can use that same knowledge and power to take care of us. Now, doubting God isn't something I'm going to recommend to happen anytime soon. However, I do want to encourage you as people of faith, ask questions, dig, search deeper into God's word, because God speaks directly to us through the living word of Scripture. God speaks directly to us through our prayer life. God speaks directly through us in the relationships in our lives. God speaks directly through us in opportunities to serve. This day, I challenge you to be challenged. Let's unpack our box and understand that although it's, we, we, we know a lot In the context of everything, we don't. God is not calling us to simple, small box faith, but instead he's telling us to rip open sometimes our difficult things to rip open and just take away that box that we've held on to for so long. And somebody taped this box incredibly well. They need a job at FedEx. God is calling us to open up ourselves to ask questions, to not limit God's self into this small, tiny, human box. Seek deeper understanding of God in a way that you never have before. Go get coffee with a friend and talk about what you're struggling with. Do not put your knowledge of God into a well-kept, tiny box. 
Follow God's greatest commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Seek God's infinite graceful wisdom rather than finite earthly answers. And remember this above all else, in our lowest of lows, even when our doubt is more than it ever has been before, God says to us, if I can do all this, I can still take care of you. If I can do all of this and command all of this, I can still take care of you. Let us pray. God, we admit, I confess, I openly admit that I have put you in a box for far too long. And then I begin to feel like I've got it figured out. And then I forget that you dwell outside of that box. That your knowledge is far greater than mine. God, it helps me to put it into perspective that you can command the waves to stop. You tell the sun when to rise, the stars when to shine. So too, you can take care of me. God, as we go from this place, I pray that you would help us to unbox what we know and search deeper. I pray that you would move through us, that you would engage us in relationships that that challenge us to know you deeper. That you would give us that room to ask questions, but when it comes down to it, that we would allow faith to intercede when knowledge fails. God, we pray all this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. If you would stand, please, and join us with uh, the eye of the storm. And, uh, well, this is a song about doubt.
Well, amen. Friends, it is good to be with you this morning. I invite you to stick around for a time of fellowship in our friendship room and uh, also to stay and pass the peace and meet with your neighbor. Maybe set up a coffee time this week to go and discuss the things that you are wrestling with this week. Let's join together now in our sending forth. As we leave this place and scatter back out into the world, may the God of hope who loves us and give himself for us Fill us with all joy and peace as we trust in him today and throughout the coming week so that in believing we may abound in hope through the love of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Our time of gathering has come to an end. Who are we to be and what are we to do? We are to be a sanctuary of Christian hope, love, and encouragement in the heart of Sioux Falls. Let's join together now in our sending song, This Little Light of Mine, verse 1. Thank you for worshiping with us today. First and Edmund for the church has three worship services every Sunday. 8.30 is a traditional service. 9.45 Unity is a vibrant, multi-generational service. 11 o'clock is modern, casual, upbeat revival service. If you want more information, call 336-3652 or check our website at www.sfumc.org. Thank you for worshiping with us and may you have a God-filled week.